Hello, everyone. Happy, happy day. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. I have an amazing guest on with me, Serena. Serena Haynes. Ooh, I'm excited. I saw her. She was on another one of my friends' podcasts recently talking about cock worship. And I was like, yes, queen, I need to have you on the show. <laughs> so here we are today. Before she jumps on, let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking cock worship. We're going to be talking some juicy sex ed and pleasure hunting tips and techniques today. I'm I'm excited. I love talking with other fellow sex coaches. It literally brightens my day. So, so, I mean, literally the list of certifications this woman has, like, just buckle up, buckle up real quick. So Serena is a Hale, Halifax NS based certified sex coach and somatic sex educator. She has been helping people with sex and intimacy coaching through body work, personal coaching sessions, workshops, and live appearances for close to a decade. We have something in common. As well as you can find her hosting Just the Tip radio show on 88.1 CKDU-FM at 9 p.m. on Friday nights. How awesome is that? Uh, Serena has a background in psychology at Memorial University of Newfoundland and is a former paramedic in Nova Scotia. Girl's been all over. Serena also has trained through the Institute for Somatic sex education in British Columbia as a somatic sex sex educator and studied clinical sexology through Sex Coach U and has a sex coaching certification through the Sexology Institute of San Antonio. Serena is also certified through the Gottman Institute Level 1 and 2 for relational coaching. Amazing. Her mission is to bring awareness to the importance of sexual health as much as we have an awareness on mental and physical health. Yes, yes, yes. Our sexual energy is our life energy and is meant to be expressed and cultivated without shame, taboo, or stigma and be a lot of fun. That was in quotation marks. Serena combines a sense of fun and relaxation to sensuality and sex, helping you find your peak potential for pleasure both in and out of the bedroom, partnered or solo. Incredible. I cannot wait to jump into this interview with her today. You guys, thank you again so much for being here. So without further ado, all right, welcome Serena to the Owning Your Sexual Self podcast all the way from Canada, which is literally on fire right now as you just shared. So thank you so much for being here. What a crazy, crazy thing that's happening around you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It'll be fine. We'll be okay. Well, it's, we're, we're good. We're just here podcasting. World's literally on fire. and people it's literally on fire. Oh, I say if, 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 if I need to move, somebody will tell me to move. Yeah. That's all I need to know. Awesome. Well, I was just recording your bio before you jumped on today and just overly impressed with everything that you've done and just all you've, you've traveled a lot. You've done all these cool programs, uh, all related to sex, sexuality, sensuality, somatics, um, which is amazing. And being a fellow sex coach myself, I would just love to hear people's stories. So how did you, how did you land into this work? Did you, were you in preschool and, you know, career day saying, I want to grow up and be a sex coach or is no, do you want to be an astronaut? Like that? <laughs> do you know what, you know, looking back, you know, it's really funny. They say that if you want to find your purpose in life, you look back at the things that gave you joy when you were a child and up through your teenage years and, and connect the dots mm-hmm. and you'll figure out what your purpose was. If I look back funny enough until I think that I was meant to be on this path. Yeah. There was a really early fascination with me, with my body. I never really felt a lot of shame about touching it or looking at it or, you know, looking at my vulva at four or five years old. I mean, just curious, you know, just kind of looking around. And then through my teenage years, you know, had my, you know, sexual experiences and and, and feelings and all of those things. And again, I heard all the narratives about how I wasn't supposed to like this, but I didn't, I was like, no, 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 I think you're wrong. This is wonderful. What do you mean? (laughs) So it was these moments where you have to connect those dots and go, you know, I think there was a grander purpose in life. Um, But no, I actually came up and I I did psychology in university and loved the idea of of human connection. So not so much the behavior, behavior, obviously, but the interpersonal behaviors that we have with one another and how we, how that looks in our day to day. But after university, I took a, a, Uh, just an interest in emergency medicine and I became a paramedic. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a little while. That gave me another idea of how the body works. So it was all those dots being connected. I had some kids. I'm talking, you know, I was always the person who 
people would come to and be like, what about this? What about that? Or we would be talking, the girls and I, and they'd be talking about something, whatever. And I'm like, what about blowjobs? Do you want to talk about blowjobs? And like, nobody really wanted to do it. So as I got older and I got married and I had the kids, I started noticing this disconnect between couples where the story goes, she doesn't want sex. He does. She gifts him a blowjob or sex on his birthday. He complains about it. She bitches about other things happening. And everybody was just doing this behind each other's backs all the time. And it didn't make sense because my relationship didn't exist like that. It was, it was different. We prioritized us as a couple. Our kids always came second, always very close second, but always second. We were always a couple first. And I realized there had to, there had to be something else to this. So I started researching like how, why, what can I do? It was, I don't want to use the words too late. It's never too late. But in my mind at the time, about 10 years ago, I really did think it was too late to go back to school and get my master's and do therapy. Then I found somatics and I realized that a lot of the things that people were talking about and experiencing was just this nervous system dysregulation. They just, they couldn't experience intimacy with one another. They didn't know what was going on in their own bodies. Women hadn't been looking at themselves, touching themselves. The way they were masturbating was just quick and dirty, right? Like just quick and dirty. Nobody was really comfortable and confident in their bodies. So when I studied somatics, that was the first go at it. I wanted to do body work. I wanted to bring these women in. I wanted to help them, touch them, heal them, feel them. But in my little town, that really didn't go across very well. So I was like, well, what else am I going to do? Because that's not going to, that's not going to kick it. So I found sex coaching and I realized that like, this is what I wanted to do. There were there were other educators I grew up listening to, Sue Johansson and, you know, Dr. Ruth. And um, I don't know if, do you guys know who Sue Johansson is? She was a Canadian phenomenon I back in the... I don't recognize Sue, but definitely Dr. Ruth for sure. Right. So Sue Johansson was a phenomenon in the in late 80s and 90s. She did so much work for sexual reproductive health, um, abortion care, like just educating people. She was a nurse. She was in um, a province, Ontario, and she had a radio show on Sunday nights called uh, a Sunday Night Sex Show with Sue, Sunday with Sue, Sex with Sue. So I listened to that every night growing up, and it was, she was she's my goal, you know? I'm like, I want to be Sue Johansson, you know? And, and like now she's, she's just had a, her daughter did a, a documentary on her life, and she's in her 80s now, and, and we're still talking about it. So it was just beautiful. So I wanted to do that, and so I followed that path. And here I am today. So I did that. And now I have my own radio show. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I'm like, that is so fucking cool that you, <laughs> that you have that. I, I need to, I need to tune in. That's, that's really neat. I've never, I don't think I've ever had anybody that has a radio show on this, on this yeah. show. So. Yeah, it was super fun. It was meant to be like a call-in show. You know, everybody call in with your questions and I'll answer them live and, and do those things. But it just timing for me, honestly, didn't work. So we record our show. Mm-hmm. I air it on Friday nights at nine o'clock. Um, you know, you can catch it online on all the time on CKDU FM. So awesome. Yeah. So we're, we're honing in on something very specific on this episode today known as hack worship and Mm -hmm. full disclaimer. I, I heard you on another podcast. I was like, I need to have this woman on. We need to talk about this. Um, ironically, I just recorded, uh, a couple shows ago uh, about king and queen worship so i'm like cock worship really falls into the flow of this because i you know I, I covered it very briefly in in doing a king worship for somebody so what can you tell us for listeners what how would you define cock worship and and what that in, involves mm-hmm. so cock worship to me and the way that i like to to kind of teach it and exp- and tell people about it is that it's an experience and it's an experience for both people. So if you want to, you know, simplify it so people are not too, you know, people get really kind of worried about this word worship, right? They're like, what do you expect me to be doing? But it's really just a beautiful massage. It's a beautiful way to connect with your partner's genitals without it having anything to do with them performing, um, them requiring reciprocity, nothing. It's just a way for you to connect to your body, connect to your partner. And within that back and forth connection, so your partner will be lying down just receiving and we'll get into how it works in a little bit, but you get to also become really attuned to your partner's body and you guys can experience this really deep intimacy. The sex that we have with our partners is generally goal oriented, right? We kind of get in in order to get out. 
right? In order to get off and get out. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it that the little, there's a little song and it goes, um, get it up, get get it up, get it in, get it out, don't mess my hair, do. <laughs> 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 and I'm just like, no, you guys, like, it has to be slower than that. So it's an experience. It's, a, it's an expansive, orgasmic experience for people um, with no end goal. Mm-hmm. So if you don't, you know, ejaculate, if you don't have orgasm, that's okay. That's not the purpose. Taking that goal out of the, the you know, the experience itself allows for much deeper intimate expansion within yourself, not necessarily even interpersonal, you know, this is, is kind of a, a moment for you to experience it within yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, and I'm glad that you mentioned that too, because so often I feel the same that sex is very much point A to point B. It's like, it's, yeah. trying, it's trying to get to point B as quick as possible. Um, and I love, I love things like, like King Queen worship, like cock worship, tantric penis massage, like whatever you're going to call it in, in yeah. it is so intentional. And it is like, filled with so much love. And for me, when I'm doing these practices with my husband, I find myself like getting into this trance almost like I'm like, so I I, like, I'm so present with what's happening. And it's so I I can't, it's like a trance literally is what I feel like. And and he even comments on this. He's like, like, you're, I'm into this, you know, and I'm not even receiving, I'm receiving in a different way. Right. Of course, but Mm -hmm. not, um, you know, I'm not receiving physically from him in that, in that I'm just giving and I'm, I'm giving all of my love and connection and intention. So I think there's that moment too, you know, we don't touch our partner's Mm -hmm. bodies really intentionally at all. We certainly don't gaze at our partner's cocks Mm -hmm. and just lovingly look at them and notice them and notice their hair, notice a wrinkle, notice a vein, notice the way it curves, notice, we don't notice Mm -hmm. anything. We're just moving so quickly through the motions. And everybody does that with, with, you know, everything that we're doing that having, hearing you say that you go into a trance, I love that because that's that expansive achievement. You know, you're, you're, you're connecting to your partner's body. You get to slow down. You don't have to worry about performing. You get to give them what you feel. So it, it comes from your heart. It comes from the sense, this really deep place of love. And then they get to experience and, and be able to just sit back and enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think another piece of this is, for me anyways, de- detaching from what, like detaching from an erection being present because yeah. pleasure can still be present even though an erection is not present. And so yeah. Yeah, doing an experience like this with him, it, it I, at first I, I like internally, I was like, oh, he, he's not liking this. He's not enjoying this, but his face and what he's verbally saying to me is saying otherwise. And so mm-hmm. I think that that for people that are just getting into this and new to this, that can that can sort of be a mind fuck for a lot of people, right? Because we're so trained right. that the erection is good or I'm doing, I'm a good girl, right? When the erection appears. Right. And even that they're a good man, mm-hmm. you know, how many men come into this and they say, it's okay for you not to have an erection. And the second that they, because normally they'll get an erection immediately, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, that first couple of sensations and then it might dissipate. It might, it might go away and they start to worry. And I say, baby, it's okay. Soft cock enjoys love and deserves love as well there's nowhere in our in our teachings quote teachings and and learning about sex do we ever think about touching a soft cock i mean that's not that's the indication that something is wrong and this worship this practice it helps on so many different levels it helps it helps us as as partners to be able to touch our, our, our partner's bodies in a different way and feel them in a different way but then they also get to sit back and have no pressure put on their penises. Cocks have so much pressure put on them all the time to be big, hard, go for a long time, make or come, do all the things. And it's all lies. Mm -hmm. None of that needs to exist. It doesn't have to exist, Mm -hmm. you know? So being able to, to sit with a partner and give soft cock, especially a lot of love, is one of the most beautiful things. People think this is all about, you know, giving a great hand job, but it's not. It's really giving this beautiful, deep, connected massage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes not even going directly for cock stimulation, right? Exactly. So many other areas in the general areas that are so nerve-rich, so sensitive, and Mm -hmm. and as well. 
um, I'm curious because you've you've done a lot of work in and whatnot in education around this. But if if we have a woman that's listening right now who, if her if it comes up where her partner does go soft, how would you how would you kind of help her coach him through that? And and what words would would you tell her to be able to give to him so that he knows again? Because the men they're very much trained. Like I need to be hard. I need to perform. I need to do good in this. Mm-hmm. How, how would you help her through? help her right (laughs) so well first of all going into it you know like before we even get into it there needs to be that conversation right away Mm -hmm. right maybe you might have a heart on you might not you might lose your erection in the middle and I always say and you might come Mm -hmm. and if you come I'm I'm not stopping unless you tell me to stop right consent is is key but like that's that doesn't that's not the indicator that this is over that's Mm -hmm. just part of it you know so having that conversation prior to and then during when it happens and you're giving your partner the love and they're losing their erection, just remind them to breathe. Try to take their attention away from their body part and bring it back into their body. Mm -hmm. So take some nice deep breaths. Maybe even if you have to stop touching them just for a minute, rub their thighs, their belly, just breathe with them, right? Instead of just, come on, baby, breathe. Come on, baby, breathe. It's not Mm -hmm. like that. It's like, come on, nice deep breath in, breath out sometimes and this one works like a charm usually is if you're rubbing your partner's thighs or their belly and you just bury your face on their lower abdominal area like just kind of like love it love that area of their body and just say everything is fine take a nice deep breath you know and just kind of keep going if your partner then says something to you like oh my god I lost my erection that's okay baby that's not what this is for does it still feel good are you good do you still feel okay yeah I'm having a really good time. Is it okay that I keep going? And they'll be like, well, yeah, of course. And be like, okay, well, let me know if you want to stop, but this is where I want to be. This is the only place I want to be. And you look amazing right now. Mm -hmm. And just give them lots of words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Mm, I love that. I want to jump on my husband right now. Just (laughs) (laughs) That's the other thing about this work. And I wonder if you find the same thing you kind of keep that sensual idol flowing, like almost all the time, you know, you can, you can get a little burnt out. I'm not going to lie to everything that you do for a living can kind of, you know, override what we do in, in private, but you keep that sensual idol going all the time. Talking sex begets sex. You talk about it. You're going to want to do it. You listen to the podcasts. You're going to want to experience it. So it's a really cool, really cool way to keep the the intimacy going. Yeah. And if I can double click a little bit on the sort of the pre-conversations that happen around this. Again, if this is something brand new to a couple yeah. and it's mainly women that listen to this podcast, though, if men are listening and they're wanting their ladies to do this, I guess I'll ask, mm-hmm. them, but how would you, how would you suggest that a partner brings this up to wanting to do an experience like this for, for them? Right. Having the third party like this, having a podcast to use, or, you know, I heard this girl, or I read this blog, or whatever, that third party is key sometimes, because we feel really, we feel a little insecure sometimes going, hey, baby, I want to try this thing, you know, but if you can say, hey, I was listening to this podcast today, and they talked about this crazy thing, and I think that we should try it, you know, I always say, use me as your scapegoat, Mm -hmm. I will be that third party that's going to be like encouraging you to do all the fun things. So you can say that, you know, and then explain what it is, right? Go through the motions and, and it's supposed to be non-reciprocal, babe. Like you get to just lie there and I'm just going to rub your body. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some oil. I'm going to rub your body down. We can use whatever lube you like. I'm going to give your, your, your cock a massage. Like, do you want to do this with me? Mm -hmm. I don't know how many partners are going to say no to that. (laughs) Even with that short, short little explanation. There's always some, there's not, you know, that's another myth is that they always, men are always raring to go. They're not, but this is a really cool way, especially for people. I'm going off on a tangent a little bit, but especially for people who are having erectile issues, any sort of erectile issues or um, ejaculation issues, whether it's delayed or early, this is a really cool, expansive experience to have where you're not required to do anything. So if you're having challenges in the bedroom with your partner in that way, and they feel like maybe they're not going to want to do something, this is a great way to say, this is not about the goal. I don't need you to have a hard on. I just want you to feel loved. 
Mm-hmm. And I want to touch your body in the way that I want to touch it. You know, like I want to give you a massage and I want to feel and touch you and get an in connection with you. So I say just use us as scapegoats to use us as that little like icebreaker. Listen to the podcasts together and explain to them that it's not supposed to be a performance based activity and that they really get to just sit and receive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad that you mentioned the erectile dysfunction thing. So I was definitely going there and thinking through this as I think this would be a great practice for somebody that is is experiencing that because again, it's, it, it's taking the pressure off of the table. It's taking the yeah. need to achieve an erection. And, and especially if you're taking a step further, if you're taking penetration off the table, if you're saying like, we're just, it's just this experience. It's just this time for you to receive and enjoy this pleasure and, and really see what happens for that. I think that for many men that I've worked with that experience ED, I think that something like this would be just a game changer for them on on so many different levels, physically, emotionally. It really is. Yeah, definitely. And when you work really deep into this, I mean, the first time you do it, it'll be something. The second time you do it, you'll relax into it a little bit more, just like anything. But the fact that men don't understand and women don't know either, that we can actually, you can have an orgasm doing this. Your, Your soft cock can also ejaculate, sort of. You know, like you can have, this play you can nobody and people sometimes panic when I say anal play and there's no need to panic over anal play we all love a little anal play I'll you know I do a lot of work with anal as well I think it's really um, important for men especially to know where their pleasure centers are but while you're doing this this massage you're also going to be working with underneath the testicles and the perineum area and all of that's going to start stimulating the prostate using the breath and getting really deep into that breath as you as you expand your practice a little bit and you get really comfortable with moving that energy you'll start to feel that energy moving in your body and will it be the exact orgasmic experience you're used to no mm-hmm. it won't but all of this happens in our heads mm-hmm. all of your pleasure is going to happen in your brain and you can stimulate that and using your breath using that life force mm-hmm. to stimulate all of this to happen you can find so many different ways to have pleasure. Mm, So beautiful. And I want to talk about, so if I don't want to be like, okay, here, come into the bedroom, lay down and I'm going to do this thing. Like what tips do you have for people to kind of set the mood or set the scene for an experience like this? Yeah. So once you've had the first, have the conversation, like I said, let them know. Sometimes a surprise is not a cool thing when it comes to, (laughs) I mean, you can sort of surprise them. You can say, Hey babe, I've got this thing planned tonight. You don't have to do anything. Let me take care of everything. All I need you to do is show up. Do you feel okay with that? Mm -hmm. And okay, so they say yes. So now you've got them in receptivity, right? You've got them in a mood to receive. Do what they need. Okay, so this is the first thing that I say. A lot of people, when they quote, set the mood, they set the mood that they want, Mm -hmm. right? So maybe I love candles and music and a dark room, but maybe my partner really likes to have CSI on the television and the lights on right? So what do, does your partner feel the most comfortable in? How does your partner need, what does your partner need in order to feel really relaxed? Mm -hmm. Do you have kids? Do you have a dog? Do you need to turn your phones off? What is it? Take care of it for them. Okay. You're just going to show up. So you show up into wherever you plan on doing this bedroom, floor, um, uh, sofa. Sometimes people will feel much more comfortable. Men, especially sometimes will feel more comfortable sitting back Mm. and it's a really, it's also a, the little caveat to that is that if your partner is sitting and leaning back and you're kneeling in front of them, that psychological component of worship is there as well. So make yourself really comfortable. And it's a comfy position to do all of this stuff in because you can move around a little bit better than having somebody on a soft bed where you've got to climb over them and do the things, but whatever it is that you need. So set that mood, make sure you have a lube or an oil. Okay. Um, That's compatible with your partner's body whatever that means for you. Some people can use oils, some people can, some people want lube, some people want silicone. It's completely up to you. We're not worried. If we're worried about condom use, of course, we don't use any oil-based anything, but if we're not worried about condom use at all, and we're not using toys, feel free to use an oil-based, like a coconut oil or something is really nice because it just, it just is really slick, but you can get some great lubes like that too. So you want to have that. Next to you, you do want to have a little towel in case things happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're planning on it, you're going to have lube all over the place, maybe hopefully, and you may have come all over the place, you know, 
it might happen. And if that's the case, you want to just take care of it for them. You can use it. You can use it as a lube and, and rub it into their bodies if they like that. And if you like that, but if not, have a little towel there. People always say wet wipes, but I don't know if you've ever tried to wipe up cum with a wet wipe. It doesn't work. You need to have something. <laughs> that's like slick on slick. You need to have something dry. Okay. So pro tip, a dry hand towel next to you a nice and then you can get that up afterwards just you know for a little right (laughs) to get the stickiness away right so afterwards but immediately it's like wiping up egg whites with a wet paper towel it's not going to work okay so use something dry first do that make them really comfy um yeah and then just get in a comfortable position for yourself get them in a comfortable position start them out with a nice breath right so you don't go straight for the goods Mm -hmm. lie them down Some people will start on their bellies and they'll give their partner a back massage, like a really nice one. Not one that you're working the knots out. Nobody's going to work or sweating. Just a really nice relaxing massage. Flip them over, massage their chest. You know, most of the men in our lives feel very strong and broad in their chest area. They also don't get a lot of heart massage. So it's a sneaky way to connect to your partner's heart by really rubbing on their chest and making them feel very manly, very big, very protective, very much the hero, but you're also massaging their heart chakra. You're massaging all of that energy, getting all of their, all the blood ready to go down their arms and let them settle into their breath. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest things we rush, right? Even people who start to do this, they go, okay, rub, rub, rub to the goods. And Mm -hmm. I go, no, no, like let your breath settle in. You and your partner. I say when when you're doing this massage, as you said, you go into a trance, Mm -hmm. you should be connected to either yourself or your partner's breath before you even go between the legs. Mm -hmm. Allow your nervous system to regulate, allow yourself to settle in. Even some people, they go, well, my, my, my mind started to wander. I didn't know what I was doing. I go, that's okay. Let your mind wander. Let it go. It doesn't have to be focused on sex right? It just has to be focused on what you're doing. So set that stage for them and then get going. I think that's, that's wonderful. And um, any sort of music that you would suggest for people, again, well, more so their your partner, whoever you're giving this to their music preferences, then I would assume. Mm-hmm. Their music preferences, but in general, you know, a really nice um, background is some sort of frequency, some mm-hmm. sort of binaural beats. Um, you know, you can do um, just Google, you know, like sexual frequency, sexual vibration music. So it's just background music. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you like your R&B from the 90s, put that on. If your partner really likes classic rock, put that on. So mm-hmm. it, it's up to you. Depending on how expansive you want that to be. Yeah, bring all of these elements in mm-hmm. where, you know, you've settled now into your breath, you've settled into touching your partner with a sensation. Um, If there are scents that you like, like know that you can smell, whatever that is, like bring that in visually, keep your eyes open and look at your partner and see what your hands are doing. Mm -hmm. Um, So you're touching them and feeling them. And then when it comes to the music, having something that's a little less distracting. So the songs that we have on that we want to sing in our heads are a little bit distracting. But if you just have that background frequency noise going on that can be really really nice because it's working with your body the vibrations in that music is going to work with your body without you really even knowing on a subconscious level yeah I didn't even think of that we we generally go for like a tantric sex music list or um Mm -hmm. lo-fi something generally that doesn't have a lot of words to it because as you said yeah Yeah. wanting to sing is distracting but I never even thought of doing like frequencies vibrations things like that and I'm fucking reiki trained like why did I never think that (laughs) (laughs) but like in your tantric playlists it would be almost the same I'm they're they're usually made that way anyway you know to like hit that sacral chakra to kind of hit that vibration of that energy center so you know but if you can find one that's like sacral chakra energy center Mm -hmm. Um, when we're doing pussy worship when I teach pussy worship we always put on like feminine energy you know so it's the same the exact same thing but it's you know working with pussy instead of cock so um yeah whatever and then whatever your partner needs maybe they need to distress that day maybe they need you know maybe you know that they have some limiting beliefs maybe you know that they just need you know some overall you can find so many of those 
vibrational music collaborations in there that, you know, you can really help heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad that you mentioned um, pussy worship because I feel for somebody listening, take everything that we're saying and then apply it to yeah. the vulva. <laughs> and you yeah. have, you yeah. have the same, you know, same concept here. So it can yeah. definitely a practice that can go for either, either. Oh, gender. definitely. I do say that pussy worship is a little more intense. Mm -hmm. I find pussy worship's a little more intense only because pussy is just such a powerful force you know and when a woman can relax into being seen and receptive their partner gets to experience a different version of themselves and them it's it, it happens with with us giving it to our, our partners with cocks as well for sure but that opposite when when I'm receiving something really expansive happens with your partner because there are not very many men out there who have ever been given permission to slow down. Don't give her an orgasm. Just look, you are not required to be the bearer of pleasure right now, right? You just have to exist and give love. And that's a different, that's a different feeling altogether for them as well. Yeah. Mm. We should do a whole nother episode on. How yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well is there anything else that we should cover around this this topic of cock worship I think we I think we did a really great job of talking benefits really for both people how to do it um I guess and I guess I will ask any is there any techniques that you would suggest for people this will be on YouTube so if anybody wants to watch this part you could mm. show us some fun things with the hands perhaps <laughs> if you want to yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. You know, it's funny. I did um, cock worship. I did a webinar a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and I went looking for my cock and I can't find it. I have a purple no. cock that I do all my stuff on and I can't find it. I even asked my kids. I was like, did you guys take the dildo? <laughs> anyway, nobody took it. I don't know where it is. Um, but yeah, so my favorite, honestly, the, the, and the one that is just the easiest for people in the beginning to do, is just called a waterfall. It's just like an infinity stroke. Mm -hmm. So you'd have the cock and you pull the foreskin down this part. If your partner has a foreskin, you need to kind of ask them or pay attention to their body language, because sometimes they're not going to want to say something in the beginning. They feel a little strange, but if they're, if the, if their coronal head, if the head of their penis is too sensitive, we want to keep the foreskin up. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're talking to your partner, but we usually pull the foreskin down and then it's just a constant mm -hmm. infinity stroke all the way over the head of the penis, but not this fast. Mm -hmm. So it's very slow. Mm -hmm. So if that was the tip I could give people is if you can see how slow my hands are moving right now, right? And maybe even slower if there was something under my hands and I was really feeling for it. People think, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to mm -hmm. do that one. I'm going to rub it. No. I say one stroke per breath. So mm -hmm. inhale, exhale, inhale, right? So the infinity stroke is really good. Um, and I also love um, the prayer. So with the prayer, your hands are kind of mm -hmm. together. And if I'm facing my partner, of course, their frenulum, mm -hmm. where their foreskin meets is going to be facing me. And that's where my little thumbs are. So my fingers are on the backside near their belly my thumbs have access to the frenulum and I get to slowly come down and then back up and massage that frenulum while my fingers very lightly get to kind of go ding, 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 mm -hmm. all the way down over their coronal head. So every single time they're getting this little massage, it's like eight massages mm -hmm. all in one. Mm -hmm. And that one's a really easy one to do as well. And to get in that trance mode, right? To kind of sit and be like, ah, and you can really move it. And if it is hard, it's really beautiful to watch a cock respond to you. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we do that very often. You know, we know it does this little pulsing thing and we make fun of it and we talk about it and we laugh and stuff. But watching a cock respond mm -hmm. to touch is, is a really amazing place and a really great way to connect with your partner. Yeah. And I think for me anyway, such a turn on personally to see and makes gives me a lot of power that, that my touch and what yeah. I'm doing is has, you have this reaction to it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think that those are two great, great starter tips that you gave us for a technique wise. 
Um, yeah, I had somebody on for uh, tantric penis massage. This was before we were doing YouTube for the podcast. And so you only got to listen to it. So I, I do hope people will watch this one on YouTube. Definitely. If you're, if you're just listening right now, pause us and then go over to, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, yeah. like, we're like 33 ish minutes in. So <laughs> Yeah, take a look. You need to have the techniques down. And the other thing that I love watching, like when I say that the penis reacts or the cock reacts, is watching the balls react. Mm -hmm. How many women, how many of you out there have actually looked at the different ways the scrotum like reacts to different stages of turn on in your partner? And then when you see it, much like I tell women, when you see your body and you watch yourself, please yourself, then you know how your body reacts a little bit more. When you see how your partner's body is reacting to pleasure, you start to create a pattern in your head. So now when you touch it, you go, ooh, I know that that's what happened just before they came. Or I know that that's what happens when they're really enjoying themselves. I remember them going off deep into trance and deep into breath when this happened to their body. And now you've got new ways to acknowledge and attune into your partner's body and know what they need from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this was such a juicy, juicy episode. I feel very inspired after our conversation today. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to want to go to golf now, um, but that's <laughs> always later. Um, yeah. So how can people listening find you, follow you? What's your preferences there? Because this was, yeah. well, I'm sure people are going to want to connect with you. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, most of my, mostly Instagram. Mm -hmm. So Instagram at Serena underscore Haynes. That's where you're going to find most of my content. My link tree is my bio with all of my offerings and everything in there. But also serenahaines.com is my website and you can visit that anytime. Um, and I'm on Twitter as well, but Twitter's kind of dirty. So like I just do dirty stuff on Twitter, but that's just Serena Haines on Twitter. If you just want to follow some dirt, because it's the only one we're not censored on. I so, I, you know, it's fun to, you got to have different personas for everything. Um, yeah. And then if you wanted to listen to my radio show, it's um, ckgu.ca, if we're listening outside of Canada, 88.1 FM um, here in Canada, but you can live stream them all and you can actually listen to them much like a podcast. If you go back into the archives of the radio station and find any Friday night at nine o'clock is just the tip sex show with Serena Haynes. That's awesome. Mm, so good. Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely checking this out. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much again for coming on the show today and um, just for being so open and, and sharing all of your, all of the things today with us. Um, hoping thank you. This are going to go and, and bring some cock worship into their life or, or ask their yes. cock worship even. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Yes, absolutely.